What if international travel took minutes, not hours? It's not science fiction, it's Elon Musk's Starship, a spacecraft designed for both interstellar exploration and rapid earthbound travel. While air travel remains the fastest global transportation method, it's hindered by time-consuming flights, layovers, and security protocols. Elon Musk wants to change this by making you get a literal rocket for long-haul flights. Is this a monumental leap forward, or a health disaster waiting to happen? Stick to the end to find out if you should smash or pass on Elon's rocket. Elon Musk isn't just reaching for Mars. He envisions Starship for Earth-to-Earth -Earth travel, bridging any two points on the planet in less than an hour. This crazy plan, once just science fiction, is inching closer to reality. The United States Air Force has granted SpaceX $102 million to develop Starship for cargo transportation, an endorsement of its potential capabilities. This contract underscores a surging interest in Starship's technology beyond space exploration. Yet, can it achieve this safely? And what implications does it hold for the future of travel and the well-being of passengers journeying at unprecedented speeds or in space? Despite the enthusiasm of Musk watchers, skepticism looms about Starship's feasibility for commercial travel. Space travel poses substantial health risks, especially from extreme acceleration's effects on the human body and heightened radiation exposure. NASA's Human Research Program, with over five decades of research, has unveiled numerous risks, including elevated radiation exposure linked to enduring health issues like cancer and degenerative diseases. The physical toll of space travel further complicates matters. Challenges span beyond Starship's technical challenges, encompassing practicalities of Earth-to-Earth -Earth travel, like boarding, security protocols, and the intense acceleration intrinsic to space journeys. Additionally, concerns have emerged about rocket launchers' ecological impacts, exemplified by the controversy around SpaceX's Boca Chica, Texas launch site, causing notable environmental harm. This intricate web of concerns must be decisively addressed before Elon's Starship can safely transport passengers globally. But can some of these concerns ever truly be addressed? Let's go back to those health risks. What are they, and what can be done to mitigate them? Space travel exposes the human body to higher levels of ionizing radiation than typically encountered on Earth, which, at elevated doses, can result in long-term health issues like cancer, heart problems, and cataracts. To combat this challenge, SpaceX is actively developing technology, incorporating deflecting materials such as Kevlar and polyethylene into spacecraft and spacesuits to shield travelers from radiation. Furthermore, specific diets and supplements, like Enterade, are being explored to minimize the effects of radiation. At this time, we're still in the realms of science fiction and wishing for fancy new materials that might not work. But what can you do if there's a health emergency while on the rocket? You're kind of stuck, and the g-force during takeoff and landing is likely to make things worse. Elon's answer to this is the SpaceX Aerospace Surgery Fellowship, a partnership with the University of Arizona and Banner Health, which represents the first US fellowship training program for aerospace surgery. Yes, really. Graduates of this program are hoping to become flight surgeons. Quite how someone will be able to conduct surgery while on a rocket dipping in and out of 5Gs of g-force is anyone's guess, but what if you're the patient? Beyond radiation, there's significant apprehension around the effects of g-forces on the human body, the risk of space sickness, and the complexities of delivering emergency medical care on board a rocket. Astronauts and commercial passengers, even if critically ill, would be forced to undergo extreme g-forces of 4 to 5G during re-entry into Earth's atmosphere, an experience profoundly discomforting for even healthy individuals. Most people would lose consciousness at head-to-toe g-forces of just 4 or 5, as their hearts struggle to generate enough pressure to maintain blood flow to the brain, causing blood to pool in the lower extremities and insufficient oxygen to reach the brain. During rocket travel, g-forces can be exceptionally high, with humans blacking out at around 9 g's due to the brain's struggle to receive adequate blood. To prepare for high G launches and prevent G-force induced loss of consciousness, astronauts undergo rigorous high G training, which includes centrifuge training, anti-G training maneuvers, and acceleration physiology. Centrifuge training involves sitting in a centrifuge machine that spins at high speeds to simulate the G-forces experienced during a rocket launch. Anti-G training maneuvers comprise of breathing and muscle tensing exercises to enhance blood flow to the brain and avert G-force induced loss of consciousness. Furthermore, space sickness, or space adaptation syndrome, can affect astronauts when changes in g-forces disrupt their spatial orientation in microgravity. Space adaptation syndrome symptoms encompass nausea, vomiting, headaches, dizziness, and disorientation and are experienced by 60-80% to 80 of space travelers during their initial 2-3 to three days in microgravity. 
IG training is employed to boost astronauts' tolerance to the acceleration forces experienced during rocket launches. G-force training isn't exactly widely accessible, so it puts a dampener on the idea of just taking a rocket to skip a long-haul flight. The impacts of space travel on human health manifest in both short-term and long-term domains. Short-term effects encompass space sickness, akin to motion sickness, occurring when the body's vestibular system grapples with the abrupt absence of gravity. Conversely, long-term repercussions span muscle and bone loss, heightened radiation exposure, and transformative alterations in vital bodily systems, including the cardiovascular, musculoskeletal, respiratory, vestibular, visual, and immune systems. The odyssey towards establishing Starship as a viable choice for Earth-to-Earth -Earth travel is fraught with formidable health-related obstacles. Principal among these challenges is a relentless encounter with high G-forces during swift acceleration and deceleration phases. Whether within high-performance aircraft or spacecraft, the influence of these formidable G-forces poses a substantial ordeal, profoundly affecting the cardiovascular and musculoskeletal systems. These forces could potentially instigate organ displacement and the rupture of blood vessels. Moreover, vertical G-forces, aligned with the spine, exert a significant impact on blood pressure, potentially culminating in a deficit of blood and oxygen supply to the brain. This dire scenario could result in vision impairment, unconsciousness, or even fatality. Additional compounding factors, such as alcohol consumption, fatigue, dehydration, and physical conditioning, could further undermine an individual's tolerance to G-forces. In the quest to establish Starship as a safe mode of travel, these multifaceted factors demand meticulous consideration, necessitating robust strategies for their mitigation with the design and operational protocols of Starship. To that end, SpaceX is collaborating with regulatory bodies, like the Federal Aviation Administration, and the company has embarked on safety reviews to try and mitigate these risks. These reviews encompass evaluations of safety organization, safety system processes, flight safety analysis, and quantitative risk criteria for launch, re-entry, and vehicle disposal. How much can realistically be achieved is still an open question, but given Elon's reputation, it's prudent to be skeptical. The future will reveal how Elon Musk's SpaceX addresses the concerns raised by the medical community, but it's looking like Earth-to-Earth -Earth travel via rocket might never take off. Want to learn more in health? Watch this next.